All right, so good to have you uh, still stay with us. You're still watching News Up, just in case you're just joining us. Uh, I'm still David Babarike. Let's dive into our next conversation. Uh, the focus is on information technology revolution, building a digital economy. Uh, you all understand, you all agree with me uh, that um, digital is the way, for the way of the future. It is the future of any economy. Uh, that is one way that uh, most economies are looking at. Uh, away from all the talks around um, oil as revenue, Digital economy is one way to go. We have a guest in the studio. We have um, Emmanuel Aha, who is uh, an ICT expert in the studio. Emmanuel, good morning and welcome to News Up. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so. And of course, joining us in our Abuja studios. Uh, right now, we have the uh, Director General of NITDA, uh, that's uh, Akashif Inua, uh, staying there with us. Uh, good morning, sir. Hello, good morning. And thank you for having me. Thank Hello, you so much. Hello, good morning. Thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, uh, well, let's start with you because you are in Abuja and, and you, you are supposed, your, your ministry, your agency, so to speak, uh, is supposed to take a look at and develop projects, programs concerning ICT in the country to advance our economy. How well have you been doing? Do we think we're at the right time and doing the right things for the ICT development in the country? Um, yes, I think we've started the journey um, some years ago, but uh, what is happening now, the unprecedented disruption by COVID-19 um, is accelerating the need for agility adaptability and transformation and when you talk about transformation that's a digital transformation so if you remember on the 23rd of october 2019 president Muhammad Buhari gcfr resignated our ministry from the ministry of communications to ministry of communications and digital economy uh, this shows that ict is a means to the end. The end is the economy. How can we use ICT to improve our economy? So the what is pandemic before the to be more profound. So at NIDA we've been implementing our strategic roadmap from 2017 to 2020. Um, the roadmap, we, we, we think adventurous and ambitious in our roadmap. We came up with seven strategic pillars under the roadmap. Firstly, it's about regulation. When we talk about regulation, we see it as a developmental regulation. How can we use regulatory instrument to unlock opportunities in our country to create Okay. Uh. When you talk about based economy, for you to benefit from it, you need to have a digitally literate citizens that can easily understand and embrace these new technologies. Then we do more about digital government services. So on the 23rd, after the renaming of our ministry, the president went further on the 28th November. Okay. Um, we'll come back. We'll come back to to Inua in a bit. We're having quite some some issues there. Let's let's come back to you in the Lagos studio, Emmanuel. I've been listening to Inua. He's talking. He's talked about a um, strategic roadmap that NIDA is putting in place. Uh, he's about mentioning um, about seven roadmap, strategic roadmaps. He's just done regulation. He talked about education and then digital uh, government services. Uh, uh, how position, how, how do you think all of this is going to position the Nigerian economy uh, within the digital space, within the context of uh, digitally, di digitalizing the Nigerian economy? All right, uh, thank you. So um, I, I want to pick it up from uh, 
it's in, his, the point he made initially about the impact of COVID, how COVID had impacted, had impacted the Nigerian economy. Positively. Pos you know, so, yeah, the okay. drive, yes. All right, so um, it's, it's, it's good for us to step back. For me, um, COVID is an audit session. It simply had thrown up the things that are not right with our journey to digital economy. Mm. All right, and there are things we need to put in place. Let's start, let's look at it from, let's look at the different sectors. Our kids are not able to learn in school because they do not have connectivity, all right? Universities are on lockdown today. They can, most schools abroad have continued to online, online um, 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 education. Our kids were not doing that here. Our courts could not sit because, or are not still able to sit because. No, there are, there are still some yeah. sitters going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, virtual some virtual, virtual yeah. 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 yeah, but not as much as you would have it, yeah. all right? Um, health sector, people couldn't go to hospitals because, you know, afraid of contracting COVID and all that. We couldn't practice telemedicine. There was no way doctors could remotely. So government, apart from federal, state government, at, at the local government level, there's no activity. There's no connectivity going on at all. So what we need to look at is tell ourselves, okay, what kind of, so COVID had thrown up a couple of things. What kind of a digital economy or what kind of con economy do we want to build? What are the pillars? And now begin to now strengthen those pillars. And the first thing he mentioned is regulation. Mm -hmm. Regulation is very important. For instance, one of the sectors that is the shining star post-COVID or within the COVID is the banking and the payment sector because of the innovation in that sector. The central bank is doing a lot. You, know, there's, you can see banks are investing in technology in order to be able to reach out to their customers because there's regulation. That regulation there, it's on the cutting edge. Now, for other sectors, we need to look at it. How is regulation catching up? All right, because if we do not put the enabling environment, investors or private sector will not come to play. So regulation is critical, all right? And then government would also, you know, um, uh, you know we need, I, I, I know that we talked about an e-government framework. We talk about it, but really and truly, what is that? How do we, how would the, a businessman take on that policy and now invest on maybe broadband infrastructure because mm -hmm. he knows that if I put my money here, this is where government is going. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reap my, you know, the fruit of my investment and all that. So some of these things just hang in the air. I mean, but this is not, for me, I'm not sitting here to cast blame. COVID has opened our eyes to the realities, to where we're not getting it right. And it's high time where all of us come together and craft the kind of country we want to be. 60% of our population are under 30. Out of that 60%, about 50% of that 60% are connected on mobile. Do we have the infrastructure to support them? So those are the kind of conversations okay. we should okay. be okay. having. All right, at Rana, this stage. we'll get back to let's go back to Abuja now where uh, Mr. Kashif Noah is. Now you've just heard what he said. For instance, your ministry is supposed, your agency is supposed to take a look at those programs that will help the ICT develop. Broadband connectivity is one way that any country can thrive on if you get it right. We're talking about 4G and talking about COVID-19. When the story of COVID broke, it broke with something that had to do with ICT. Because many people were of the opinion that it was the planned introduction of 5G network that caused that. So let's even take a look at what we have working right now. We've had 2G, we've had 3G, 4G. Some people even said the 4G is not as effective as it should be, and we're planning for a 5G. Talk about the broadband connectivity that we use in the country right now. How are we faring? Um, thank you, Sean, and thank you, Emmanuel, for the contribution. Um, never before has digital economy been more critical than it is today. And COVID-19 has forced you and I to embrace 
new practices such as remote everything, which connectivity is at the backbone. So if you could remember on the 19th March 2019, President Muhammad Buhari GCFR launched the broadband plan with the, uh, with the uh, strategic initiative on getting broadband coverage for 70% by 2025. And the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, has been driving the implementation. The implementation has started uh, in 2019, around November, when we did the analysis, the uh, broadband coverage was about 32%. But today, the coverage is more than 40%. And the minister has set up a ministerial committee for the implementation of the broadband plan. And also, he has negotiated with the governor's forum on the right of way, which was a major challenge to broadband uh, rollout in the country. So the implementation is going on. And in addition to that, uh, there are other government interventions for unserved and underserved communities, like the USPF, Universal, uh, Universal Service Fund, is their provision service fund, is there to bridge gaps whereby the telcos are not going there. In addition to that, the NICTIP 2, the government uh, backbone infrastructure, is about to take on any moment. So the government is seriously working on the broadband plan and the implementation of the digital economy policy and strategy as well, which has eight strategic pillars. The same thing with our own strategic roadmap, the first in the uh, digital economic uh, pillar uh, is developmental regulation, then followed by digital literacy and skills, then solid infrastructure. Okay, uh, we'll come back to you again, um, the DG. Okay, it's back. All right, we'll come back to you, DG of NIDA. Uh, let's, let's look at where the conversation is going. You're talking about broadband. Now, you know that all of... Uh, okay, we have, him, we have him back. Let's, let's let him land. You can land your line of thought, DG. Uh, we, are, we are listening to you. Continue. Okay, what I was saying, the regulation is to enable the ground, the flame uh, field for everyone. Government is doing it, its own investment, telcos are doing, and also the infra infraco companies are going to be licensed to deploy uh, connectivity services. In addition to that, like at NIDA, we are doing massive, uh, we are pushing for massive digital literacy. Like under this pandemic, we conceptualized an idea of a virtual learning environment, the NIDA Academy. Um, so far, we have over 23,000 Nigerian learning on that platform on different uh, ICT uh, fields like emerging technologies, the connectivity, the um, cloud computing, and so on and so forth. So um, also we are working on digital society whereby we are creating a hubs around the countries providing infrastructure for our tech and innovative ecosystem to come up with innovative ideas that can help us promote digital economy in Nigeria. In addition to that also, the government is pushing for digitization of government services because everything is becoming remote. Therefore, government also need to be able to provide digital services for citizens. So under the leadership the, uh, of the Ministry, Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, DG, we are coming DG up Noah. with the... Uh, digitization yes. can, can, can process I as here, well um one one second yes uh, it's been all about um, gov government will government ease government will government ease 
uh, I sit down here almost every day and I hear this from government functionaries. C can you just take us through exactly what is in place? What do you have in place in ensuring that we achieve um, anything close to a digital economy. Uh, I, I'm not excited when I hear uh, we will be doing this. Well, it sound, it's beginning to sound like a campaign and rhetorics for me. I, I, want, I want tangibles here. What are the tangibles uh, that your ministry is putting, putting in place uh, in ensuring that we get anything close to a digital economy? Um, we are, it's not just a wish list I'm saying. We have innovative thinking and action together. We came up with the digital economy policy and strategy in November last year, and we have started implementation. I spoke about the uh, developmental regulation. We issued the NDPR, Nigerian Data Protection Regulation, which we have created a new industry. And the data protection has created more than 2,800 jobs, and we've licensed 27 uh, DPCOs, data protection uh, compliance organizations. So this is something that is happening, something on ground, and data provide the backbone for the digital economy because people need to trust the system before they can use it. And we are pushing a lot for compliance, we have uh, investigated more than uh, 16 breaches, and we have found one, like the Lagos Inland Revenue. We have investigated them, and we have found them for breaching the NDPR. Then when you talk about the digital literacy, the president commission launched the digital literacy training for Nigerians. We've started it on the 19th March. And between 19th March today, we've trained more than 50,000 Nigerians. Like under the uh, NIDA digital learning platform alone, we've trained more than 23,000. And also in partnership between our ministry and IBM, we've trained more than 30,000 Nigerians. And we are also doing other innovatives in agriculture. Two weeks ago, we've uh, launched a pilot project in Jigao State whereby we can use digital uh, tools to enhance our agri sector. We target agri because agri provide over 70% of our workforce and also over 40% of our GDP. Right. So we are also looking at the infrastructure today, our minister, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, is commissioning projects in relation to digital economy. Okay. We are commissioning the Lagos, uh, the ICT hub we built in Lagos University. We are commissioning another one in ABU Zaria, and we are commissioning some projects in Inugu and Katsina State. Okay. All these are to provide the solid infrastructure of digital economy. Okay, uh, DG, we'll get back to you. Let's come back to the studios. Emmanuel, you've heard the DG really announce all that NITA has done. How do these um, match up with the realities on ground of what uh, our ICT industry is as we speak? All right, thank you, um, Shion. So, I mean, the, the, the project or the intentions of government, it's clear and laudable. And, you know, it, 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 unfortunately, it doesn't line up with the realities on the ground because a lot more needs to be done. What we see here from what the DG has said, you know, it's government, government, government. And the government can only do, a, you know, as in, very much as they can. So a lot of involvement or participation is involved. There are critical things we need to look at if we're talking a digital economy. You know, and we've talked about broadband, all right? Broadband needs to be democratized, all right? Like yesterday, yeah. we, need to, we need to achieve that. The other thing that is very critical, it's identity management. All right, today we're still struggling with giving Nigerians an ID. You don't know who is a Nigerian. Identity management is important because you can embrace a digital economy. One thing about in the digital ecosystem, you need to know who you're dealing with. Right. All right, you need to be able to, you know, drill down that this is shame. All right, so we, our identity management system is just everywhere. 
we need to get that together. The other thing that is critical is addressing. All right? So where do you live in a digital, you know, if I want to find out where you live, under the mango tree behind the incomplete building is no address. <laughs> All right? So the issue of digital addressing, we need to sort it out like yesterday. Because all these things would come together. That, and then the issue of literacy, like I said, you know, about 60% of our young people are under 30. All right? And so we need to take this literacy thing to them. We need to educate them. The other fourth pillar that is very critical, as you move our everyday activity into, the, into digital, you need to deal with the issue of cybersecurity. Yeah. Are we yes, ready? Are we, are we ready for that? If hackers take over government parastatals and shut it down, are we ready to respond as a country? Do we have those pillars, those 